Hey, howdy, hey, Disney friends, it's Amber with Mickey Travels. I had a request to do a video where I break down some of the table service restaurants inside the Walt Disney World parks. So what I've done is I'm here on the website, and we're going to go through my picks for each res each park. I've got like four or five um, with each to pick. Animal Kingdom, not so much. There's not a ton of options there. Um, these are all places that I've either dined at personally or book often, and most of them I have dined. So I can give you some personal experience. Um, and plus some things I've heard from other people that have dined there as well. So quickly, on the website, this is just the Disney World website. And a quick tip to go to the dining options here. A lot of people um, kind of get lost on the site when it comes to dining. Um, above where my screen is right now, there'll be a Things to Do tab, and it'll say Dining on there, and you'll click there first. Also, um, if we're going to designate per park and you're specifically looking for a place to dine inside a park, you can just search over here on the left-hand side just a particular park for places that do require reservations, which are table service restaurants. So stick around. We've got a lot to cover, and I'll try to go as quickly as possible, but hopefully give you some ideas on some new places to try for your next Disney World trip. things first. I do have in the works a whole like Disney Dining Plan 101 video coming up. Um, hopefully I'm going to record it right after this one so stay tuned for that to be on there. If you're still concerned about if the dining plan is worth it or if you're just confused on what the dining plan is, it is going to be updated because it is a 2018 edition and there have been changes made since some previous dining plan videos I've made. Also, even though these are all the table service restaurants here, it says there's 123 that are table service, most of them do recommend reservations, but you can try to walk up to some. You may have to wait a bit. So a tip for me is to always make dining reservations in advance. You can 180 days before. So even if you don't know if you're going to use it, go ahead and book it, and then about a week before or so, maybe make your confirmed plans on which ones you're going to cancel when it gets closer. So before we dig in, if you are interested in having some help with this and are interested in my planning services, you can contact me. My info is below. I do work with clients who are planning their Disney World trips. Also Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, and all that good stuff. Okay, so let's start with Magic Kingdom, which is probably the most popular. Um, again, if you are specifically looking for a restaurant in a certain park, you can break it down by here. But I've already got my tabs all open up, so I'm just going to go through each of those that way. Um, dining inside a park does take quite a bit of time, so that's something to think about too. If you are only going to be in a park one day, it might be better to just plan your quick service meals for the parks because a lot of these table services, especially if there's a character, could take up to an hour to an hour and a half for the whole dining experience. So that's some precious park time. So not a lot of people like to do that. They like to do their parks, uh, take a break, and then maybe have dinner and then go back later. So something to consider if you're trying to go through Disney quickly. However, there are tons of really great options inside these parks, and so some I recommend is not miss. So it's a win-lose-lose-win kind of thing here. Um, you can't go wrong. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's start off with probably the most popular at Magic Kingdom, which is Be Our Guest. So one thing to notice on these websites are they're going to give you the price right here, um, very broad in a sense, and most one-credit meals are going to be the $14.99 to $34.99 choice. And you're also going to be able to tell right here if they are accepted on the dining plan. And as you can tell, since 2017 is about to be over, um, I just you can look here and it is accepted for a quick service for breakfast or lunch. And then you can use your other two dining plan options for any meal if you wish. Um, again, so the one table service credit are going to be in this range. And... Be Our Guest, personally, I have done a lunch, and I have not had a dinner. I've been in there during dinner. I had a um, a cupcake because I just wanted the gray stuff. It's pretty good. It's one of those experiences that you just need to do um, just to experience the inside. As you can see in the picture, it's the ballroom. They also have the West Wing with the Enchanted Rose, and it's the Beast um, has scratched the picture like in the movie and whatnot, and it does thunder in there. Last time we were there, a little girl when the thunder went off, was like, oh no, like serious sass, and just like walked out. She was like, I am not having the thunder. So if that's an option for, like, if your kids freak out on that stuff, something to consider about staying in that room. 
Uh, if you do a quick service, you can choose where you're going to sit once you walk out. If you do the regular table service, you can just request to be seated in a certain area. I think it's worth the table service credit. It's okay food. Again, it's more about the experience. Dinner, I've heard, is a lot better. They have a really good steak option. All right, so that is the most popular. So that one is going to be the most difficult, probably besides Cinderella's Royal Table, to get reservations for at the 180-day mark. Um, the breakfast and lunch is easier than the dinners. And keep in mind, depending on what time you're going to Disney World, um, these might be closing different times because of parties or whatnot. And they'll show, once you click on the calendar and choose the day you're thinking about, it'll show you the hours for that restaurant. So it'll let you know if there's a party planned ahead of time that it might be closing at 6. I am not going to put Cinderella's Royal Table on here just because I consider it a signature restaurant because it does take two. So these are specifically only one credit meals. Let's hop over to Adventureland where we have the new uh, Skipper Canteen, which is going to be themed over the Jungle Cruise. Have not had this yet. It's going to be a little different type of food. So be sure to check the menu before you do book here just if you have picky eaters. Same kind of price range. All these are going to probably be more valuable for a dinner just because it does cost more if you're on the dining plan. So if you're not on the dining plan and looking for the better price option, consider a lunch. Uh, this only serves, let me see if they serve breakfast. I think it's just a lunch and a dinner. Yes, um, lunch and dinner. And you can get here by just clicking on the menu. It'll tell you exactly what they serve and how much everything is. It's pretty great. I've heard lots of people like this. It's easy to get a reservation for. Not very many people know about it. It is kind of tucked away inside Adventureland. And just an overall experience, especially if you just rode the Jungle Cruise and then you want to kind of jump in here and have a lunch or dinner. Next, I've got the Crystal Palace, which I've dined in at least twice. It's one of our favorites just because it is a buffet. So on the dining plan, if the buffet is going to be about $35. Um, as you can see here, though, sorry. Um, it's got 15 to 35, but then it jumps to 35 to 60. That's because the dinner is more expensive here. So if you are on the dining plan, this is definitely worth it because uh, in 2018, a table service credit uh, dining plan is about $72 a day per person. So if you're using your meal and it is about $50 or so, then that takes a huge chunk of that and is worth it in my eyes um, because you'll still have the quick service and snacks still from that price. Really good food. Um, it's a very loud atmosphere. It's very large, um, and you can tell it's like an atrium kind of view, like decor. Um, it is character. Winnie the Pooh and his friends are there. Food is really good. Again, like I said, um, just a regular buffet. They do have a kids buffet with like mini corn dogs and stuff if your kids are picky eaters. But um, it is going to take quite a while to see all the characters through here. We both times I went, it was different experiences. We they went quickly through us. Or it took them a while to get to see everyone because you've got Eeyore, Pooh, Tigger, and Piglet are the ones that do wander through here. So if you're one of those people that want more of a quiet, non-kid, everywhere kind of experience, this is probably not for you. But if you're looking for a different character meal besides like your regular Mickey or Princess ones, then this one would be my choice. It's located near Main Street and we could see the castle from our table. Uh, it was a really good view. K Liberty Tree Tavern is one of my favorites. Um, just because of the food and the amount of food. It is served family style. So you do get um, a lot of really cool home-cooked Thanksgiving-ish type food. They do serve lunch and dinner there. So it's turkey, pot roast, uh, mashed potatoes, vegetables, stuffing, etc. And this is one of the top places to dine if you are going on Thanksgiving. So that's something to think about ahead of time too because they do a specific Thanksgiving dinner here. Same with one table service credit, 15 to 35. It's located in uh, Liberty Square. One of my favorites. It used to be character when I went. Uh, Mickey and Minnie used to dress in colonial outfits. I really wish they still did that. But this one is not so bad to get a reservation for. And it is spread out and a little quieter for those that want that. Okay, and lastly on my Magic Kingdom list, something that has come back. I do know that I did not include Tony's or Plaza on this one. Uh, Tony's, I have heard 50-50 on the food, so if you're an Italian person, you can check that out. But, I mean, it's similar food to, say, an Olive Garden or something like that. Not a character meal. And then Plaza is, the food is pretty good. It's just, it's not worth uh, table service credits. So something to think about, too, if you're wanting to use that there. The Plaza does include a Festival Fantasy package, though, I believe. And maybe it's Tony's. So that could be a whole other video if you want to know what the packages are. 
It's essentially you get one table service credit, you get the meal, and you get a voucher to go back to something. So they have one for Festival of Fantasy, and they have one for Fantasmic, etc. So the Diamond Horseshoe reminds me a lot of where I'm from. We have a theme park in my area called Savadar City, and it's just the type of food that is served there. And they do have a saloon show that is going on while you eat. So it's kind of like a mini hoop to do, but kind of hidden, like I said. So you can see in the picture, like, what kind of food they do serve. I believe this is also family style. Let's look at the menu. Um, yes, you get at your table a salad, the pulled pork, sausage, turkey, lots of lots of meats. And it does come with the dessert as well. So a lunch and a dinner here. And you kind of get a little show if you're into that frontier land kind of vibe. All right, we're going to jump over to Epcot. Now, this one is going to be a little different because they have a ton of table service restaurants over in World Showcase. But I am going to pick a few in Future World and then just a few in World Showcase just to give you an idea on some of the favorites. So first off, we have a character meal called the Garden Grill, which is located in the Land Pavilion uh, in, World, or no, in uh, Future World. Probably one of the most unique character meals you can experience. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so an opportunity to get into the park early by dining before 9 o'clock. Uh, Chip and Dale and Mickey are there. The restaurant rotates slowly, and you get to see some of the uh, Living with the Land attraction as it rotates. Food is different and really good, and a lot of the products that they serve are grown in Epcot. One table service credit, and again, same kind of thing. Uh, the price is higher for dinner, so something to think about. Coral Reef is also located in Future World, and this one is uh, near the Living Seas or the Nemo attractions. It is surrounded by an aquarium, so you do have a view of fish swimming all around you. More of a seafood vibe with the menu. Um, it says sharks, sea turtles, and sometimes you can see the scuba divers. Do you guys remember when Full House went to Disney uh, in the 90s? Uh, they ate at this restaurant, and I believe some of the characters were actually scuba diving, and you can see that in the show. Random facts with Amber time. All right, so looking at the menu, again, it is going to be a lot of seafood type products, so something to think about if you have an allergy. Uh, but more unique choices than, say, your typical um, burger fries kind of places. Country fried cauliflower steak. Yummy, yummy. So lunch and dinner here, no breakfast. All right, so jumping over to World Showcase, we're going to Norway where we have probably one of the most... Probably the most popular character meal that doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, if I had to categorize some things. Okay, this is Akershish Royal Banquet. Tons and tons of princesses here. Uh, the food is a little different, but it is a favorite of my clients. I personally haven't ate there. Um, I may someday, but it is have a little taste of Norway. And you can see here 35 to 60 is even with breakfast. So this is a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some people like to do the super early breakfast here and then jump right on to Frozen Ever After. So they try to get an 8 a.m. reservation for this. One table service credit, and you get to see all the princesses. So a good alternative to Cinderella's Royal Table. Again, the, this one is going to be more like at your table or buffet kind of thing. So all different types of things meat-wise, and this is just breakfast, including fish, because, you know, it's Norway. And the dinner menu is going to be slightly different they actually have entrees that you can order. So breakfast is more buffet-esque. So again, look at this menu though before you go in case you have super picky eaters, but the character experience itself is completely worth it. All right, moving on into Japan, Teppan Edo. Personally have had this one. It's excellent. We are a big fan of hibachi grill kind of things. So we did visit this a few years ago. Uh, great, they do the show when they cook your food. It's one table service credit, and you can have steak, chicken, shrimp, all kinds of things that are more high-priced, um, and get the show with it. Uh, reservations are not very difficult for this, and they just serve lunch and dinner here. Okay, in Italy, we've got Via Napoli, which is the pizzeria that they have. Um, very popular with a lot of people. Um, just a little trick with this one, because if you're on the dining plan, you got to realize that if you buy something that says... For a certain number of people, they will charge you that many table service credits. So let me show you an example. Um, on the pizzas. Serves, I'm pointing at it like you can see me. Right here. Um, it says the pizza serves two to three. Um, that means they would probably use two table service credits for that meal. So lots of choices here. This is one of the bigger menus on property just because they have so many options with the pizza. 
pretty good if you have a pizza family. Keep in mind that the crust and stuff is a little different because it is authentic Italian, uh, but very good. Very large restaurant. Reservations are mediocre to get, um, can be a little loud. All right, let's go to Hollywood Studios, my favorite park. A lot of people don't know that. I love Magic Kingdom, I get it, but Hollywood's just my favorite and has been for a really long time, so I'm excited for Toy Story and Star Wars to open up soon. Sci-Fi Dine-In is our must-go-to every year. Uh, difficult to get reservations just because of the seating. So if you see down here, you've got the car. That's where you sit. You sit in a car. So if you have large families, they only can fit like two in each seat and there's three rows. So something to think about if you're having a hard time finding availability, it's because it's just difficult to sit people here. Uh, they serve lunch and dinner and the 15 to $35 on the one table service credit. They do have a variety of burgers. They do serve shakes and some really great desserts. And you're watching a movie on a drive-in theater screen while you eat. It's very sci-fi based. Not a lot of Disney incorporated there. Um, again, it is difficult to get a reservation here, so make this a priority if you're planning on dining here. Hollywood and Vine is a character meal that is served for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Is a buffet, similar food to Crystal Palace, very large dessert buffet. And this one is character, but it's different. Breakfast is going to be Disney Junior, while lunch and dinner are going to be um, Minnie and her friends dressed in a theme depending on the holiday or the time of year. So it's mostly Hollywood outfits, and then if it's near a holiday, they'll be dressed in that. Like Christmas right now, they have um, their seasonal outfits on. This is one of those locations you can get the VIP seating with the Fantasmic package. You can't book the Fantasmic directly on this page. You'd have to go to the Fantasmic dining page and click and try to find a reservation there. This one is another one of those um, really loud kids running everywhere kind of experiences, but the buffet was pretty good. We went when it was Star Wars weekend, and so all the characters were dressed like Star Wars characters, which unfortunately they do not do anymore. I'm hoping when all that Star Wars stuff up, opens up that they'll maybe make that available again. Who knows? 50s Primetime Cafe was a one and done for us, but the food is really good. Very home-cooked meal kind of food. 15 to $35, one table service credit. Um, the atmosphere, is some, the experience itself is what people go to uh, for this restaurant. They act as if they are your parents or a housewife in the 50s and will pick on you if your food isn't, like if you haven't cleaned your plate, elbows on the table, things like that. And they are acting, um, but you know that sometimes when you go to these places, it's for the show. So if you have people who are uncomfortable with that, keep that in mind. But it is humorous. We did Whispering Canyon this past month, and it was a similar circumstance where the people act with you and maybe pick and poke at you a little bit. So some people enjoy that, some don't. So there's the warning on that. But again, the food is really good. The milkshakes are great. And the decor in the restaurant's really cool because it looks like a really old kitchen from the 50s. And lastly, at Hollywood Studios, Mama Melrose. I just dined here about a month ago because, again, when we went, we were just, since Hollywood's one of our favorites and we do it every year, just trying something we haven't tried yet. And I had never been here. It's near the Muppets. And it's really good Italian food, you know. If you really want that authentic taste of foods, you need to go to Epcot and try to dine there as often as possible. But I really had no negatives about this. The menu is small, but the choices were, it was like hard for me to make a decision because everything looked so good. Uh, 15 to 35 here and um, just lunch and dinner as well. Very easy to get reservations for. Um, lots of openings. They also qualify for the Fantasmic package. And shout out to my server that was at Mama Melrose when we went because she was actually from uh, my home state. And I coach at a school that that school is in the conference. So she knew exactly where we were from. It was crazy. It is a small world after all. All right, I only have two for Animal Kingdom. Um, I don't include Rainforest Cafe on my list. Uh, we have a Rainforest Cafe in the Kansas City area. Well, we used to. We do have a T-Rex there as well. And I feel those are very similar. But Rainforest is really good, so if you have never done that experience or the T-Rex Cafe at Disney Springs, then yes, something to think about. But I just included um, two here. Tusker House, which is the character meal, 15 to 34 for breakfast and lunch, and then 35 to 60 for the dinner. Donald and his friends dressed up in safari outfits. Different kind of food here because it is more African-based, um, but there are your typical buffet items as well. So really good. 
qualifies for the River of Light dining package, so consider that too. Again, those packages are all one table service credit. You just get priority seating for the show, which can and cannot be a good thing because I've heard some of the priority seating is not the best. This has been a favorite buffet for um, a lot of my clients, and the to get a reservation, it's not super difficult. So something to think about for there if you're just trying to do maybe one character buffet. Um, and this one, yeah, isn't as crowded. And then lastly, uh, my husband's favorite table service restaurant in the parks is Yak and Yeti. Uh, we love Asian cuisine, and so we try different kinds all the time. We went here for the first time a couple years ago, and he loved it, and we're going back again soon. So lunch and dinner here, super easy to get a reservation for. People just kind of walked up and were seated right behind us, and we had a reservation. Um, his favorite was the dessert. They had a pineapple upside-down skewer that was served. I believe I had orange chicken. I can't remember what he had. We did film that if you want to check our past videos of Yak and Yeti. The view is great because it's, again, inside the park and you can go upstairs and kind of see around the park there. But yeah, kind of a hidden gem. Not a lot of people book that. Again, like T Tokyo Dining in Epcot. That one also, tons of people don't book that in advance. But it's really good food um, if you're wanting to do a nice sit down because it's a hot day and you just want to sit down and relax. So even if you don't get a reservation for this one you can walk on up all right that sums up my list I know I talk fast uh, I just want to make sure I get as much info to you as possible if you have any questions let me know in the comments below again these are all just recommendations that I make these are ones I've personally had or book all the time for my clients there are tons of other options outside of the parks as well so something to look at too if you don't want to dine while you're inside a park um, also because maybe you've already used all your tickets up or don't want to use a ticket that day because it was your break day or your arrival day or your departure day, then yeah, there's tons of places outside to dine too. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you all really soon. Bye.